Well, hello and welcome to Click Spotlight. My name's John Sands. This is Click Spotlight at Connections 2019 in Dallas. And I had the very great pleasure of having in front of me Itmar and Corian. Welcome, Itmar. Thank you very much, John. Great to be here. Yeah, no, it's great, great to have you here. And the whole Attunity family is, you know, I've been sp uh, speaking to people on the uh, on the expo floor, and and it's and it is truly great to have um, Attunity on board now. So with the transition, then, mm -hmm. what's so? What do I call you? <laughs> <laughs> well, a good a good question. I'm now about a week uh, at Click, and it's yeah. been a very exciting week. And by the way, great event uh, out here. So now, within uh, as part of the Click family, I'm a senior VP and the managing director for enterprise data integration right. at, uh, at Click, which uh, um, simply means I'm basically responsible for the Attunity uh, business line, oh, okay. which came okay. through the acquisition. And yeah. um, uh, before that, again, up to about a week ago, I was an executive with Attunity, been there for quite a lot of, quite many years. Mm. Uh, and I had a pleasure of really doing the very different roles from uh, leading um, product management, product marketing, oh, to- okay. um, so all at Attunity, you've done all within, at Attunity. Within Attunity, yeah. um, alliances, business development and corporate development. And uh, recently I was the chief marketing officer. Yeah, so how long have you been at Attunity for? Uh, I've been at Attunity for over 15 years, so ah, quite, a, yes. quite a lot of my, bit of my career. And uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun um, taking the company uh, through different stages yeah. in its uh, life and especially uh, the last uh, 10 years really started the company, uh, bring mm. it back uh, into the data integration space yeah. uh, with a big focus on real-time data integration, um, brought in, bring to market Attunity Replicate, which today was became the yeah. flagship product, recognized as a leader, uh, leader, uh, leader product in data replication, and then expanding beyond that to a broader spectrum of data integration. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, I was speaking to uh, Sammy earlier, and he, he was saying seven, like 17 years he'd been at yeah. Attunity. And that's, I mean, I've been at Click for 12 years, and I thought yeah. that was a long time. Now I'm, yeah. I'm a newbie from, from that. But it, but yeah. it shows, actually, you don't stay mm -hmm. around for that long unless it's a yeah. good place to be. You, you truly don't. Great group of people, great mm. team. Uh, very, very good uh, professionals, a lot of expertise uh, in data integration and the different systems that we, we work with. Mm and a good team to work with, so yeah, yeah. it's been fun. So, for those of people that don't know, mm -hmm. um, what space do Attunity exist in then? So, Attunity is in the data integration space. Yeah. It's a uh, pretty recognized, it's a recognized market. Uh, Gartner, for example, has their data, their major quadrant for data mm -hmm. integration tools, and other analysts, uh, of course, recognize it as well. So, Attunity has been in the data integration uh, market for a very long time, mm -hmm. well before I joined it, since the 90s. Um, and really had software for different types of data yeah. integration uh, requirements, starting with um, data connectivity and data federation, which is all about getting access to data wherever data is, and then moving into uh, uh, parts of data, data integration that deal with moving data from place to place. Yeah. So not yeah. so much connecting to the data as much as moving it around, and that's where we introduced our uh, change data capture technology, uh, and then kind of start to move upstream from having um, uh, to having Attunity Replicate, which yeah. channels the end-to-end -end database replication, and we introduced that to market in 2011, since that it evolved, and then we evolved into broader parts of data integration, mm. such as data transformation and data warehouse automation, uh, big data uh, integration, cloud data integration to get data to the cloud. So Attunity today offers a much broader set of data integration capabilities. Um, we hear there is so much data, and the phrase I use is data, data everywhere, but not a drop to drink, because people hoard data, people yes. gather data, and, and the analogy I use is all around, I have a drawer at home, that anything I think I might need tomorrow, like old keys, batteries that may have a, still have a little bit of charge in them, IKEA screws that are left over from when I make Just a piece of furniture, there. they all go in there. Yeah. Um, because I'm worried if I jump the way I'm going to need them tomorrow. And I, my feeling is that companies have the same um, feeling about data. So they mm -hmm. just keep it because they don't truly understand what it is. Now, do you feel that is, um, is that a common mistake when people are looking at their data strategy and how they're going to deal with, with all this? We get so much now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, it's a really good question that, mm. uh, that, that you raised. And I think it has a lot to do with the world of, of big data. The uh, technologies, first of all, we're in the living in an age where there's just so much more yeah, that we yeah. can store. Mm. So yeah, you know, there's only so there's only so much stuff you'll put in the drawer. But no. when you think about the amount of data that's generated, uh, especially with more uh, of the world becoming digitized, mm. and there's so many more sources of uh, information. Also ourselves, we're generating data all the time. Yeah. So yeah. the amounts of data that are being generated and therefore may be useful to store somewhere are just growing in exponential mm. rates. At the same time, there are technologies that allow to store that. 
uh, in a more economic fashion. Yes. Yeah. So again, if you had to buy a drawer every day, you know, that'd be an issue, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, right now, since we have, uh, we've seen the rise of Hadoop and HDFS as a way to store large amounts of data, and today with cloud object stores becoming a more common, mm. uh, lower, lower cost, basically, way, economic, elastic way to store a lot of data, uh, companies use that in order yeah. to store a lot of data. The other thing that goes with it is, it goes back to your question, uh, I think there's uh, companies see the potential uh, to use data in a lot of different ways. Mm. Some of which they may they realize they may not have figured out yet. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, yeah. They, they say, well, at least I don't lose the data. Yeah. And as long as it's economic to keep the data and it's more raw form, even right, let's keep it. Let's make sure we don't lose it in case we need it later. And I think that because of that, you're seeing companies, you know, uh, resort to keep a lot of data. And we see that in the growth of data, especially the data lakes. Because yeah. that does become the repositories. Yeah, of course. It's really course. large sets of data. Mm. Yeah. So, the, a, a big theme across the conference is, is data data literacy and and understanding. And it kind of goes back to what I was saying about the, you know, the, the draw about people maybe not fully um, thinking yes, save it, and they can economically now. It doesn't cost them much to do it, as you as you yeah. said. But do they truly understand? And I think you mentioned that in your last statement is whether they truly understand whether they're going to need it now because they're not literate enough on that data. Do you see that yourself? Uh, we do. We Actually, it's interesting. We see, especially with data lakes, we see companies taking two very distinct type of approaches to building lakes. Uh, in one case, it's a very infrastructural type of a construct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're saying, okay, let's build a lake. And that's what also common when customers have uh, shared services organization, they're going to build a lake, and then mm. they're going to enable other people, other business groups to come and drink from the lake, right? Yes. Or come and get, yeah. get the data they mm. need out of the lake. Uh, but in that context, many times they are not aware of the specific ways yeah. people will yeah. want to use the data. Uh, but it's, it tends to be very big infrastructural uh, approaches to building it, and it's kind of a build it and they will come kind mm. of yes. an approach. <laughs> and, you know, uh, it's, again, it's, a, it's one approach. The other one is when there is a very specific mm. application, there is a very specific analytic need. For example, we want to do predictive analytics in order to reduce the faults and maintenance costs of uh, automobiles. Yeah, okay? yeah. So I have a very specific type of question I'm trying to answer. It's going to require a lot of data. Mm. I'm going to get, make, get data, and this is some of what some of our customers do from the cars. Yeah. And I'm actually going to take data from all the manufacturing facilities, which are hundreds of data sources. Mm. I'm going to put them all together, and I'm going to be building these machine learning and other models that will allow me to predict when failures might happen. And then maybe I can avoid a very costly recall, well, for yeah, example, absolutely, right? Yeah. So, but in that case, there's a very specific application. Mm. And in that case, yeah, you see, of course, more thought about, okay, where, where does the data need to get to so the people who need to ride the machine learning process can actually do that, okay? So we're seeing both things, but go, going expanding on it to your point, we have seen customers that focused initially only on the process of getting data to the lake. Yeah. And that has been where Attunity is focused initially because that's what the, more the market was going. And we've, be, we've provided the market with a great way to get data to the lake. With our technology, we can help companies scale how many feeds they bring to the lake, do it at significantly less cost and more efficiency, and also do it in real time. And we have customers that feed today hundreds and some even thousands of feeds into the data lake. And while we've done that and it was great, we had the customers who came back and said, listen, it's really great that you help us get the data there. Yeah. But what we get is really raw data. Especially when you're doing streaming data, the data is pretty raw. You actually see like a representation of data that is a set of changes over time. It's like an audit of the data. And that format of data is not really usable mm. okay, for consumers who may be using tools like ClickSense, for example, yeah, that want to access the data. So can you help us? Because from the raw data to bring the data to be ready for analytics, we need to spend a lot of time with development resources. Can you help us? So we went back and we thought what we could do, and we created uh, automation around that. So we created innovation that allows to automate the process of taking the raw data that arrived at the lake and transforming it, shaping it, producing out of it analytic ready data sets yeah, of things yeah. like an operational data store, an historical data store. And that really allows not just to scale the amount of data that comes in, but also to accelerate the production of analytic ready data sets out of it making, you know, supporting literacy and accelerating yeah, content value. Yeah, and you can work, work with, analyze, and argue with that data. So, so, so uh, I looked at some of your, your interviews on, um, on, on YouTube and on the internet, and you talk a lot about artificial intelligence. Yeah. And um, I think it's a subject you, you have a bit of a passion for. Yeah. What, um, 
How do you see this field evolving? Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, fast. Fast, okay. yes. <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I think the artificial intelligence, machine learning, predictive analytics—they're all kind of tied together. They're, they're, they're growing really fast. We're seeing it both with the um, what our customers are trying to do. We're seeing it with the introduction of um, new tools, uh, new mm -hmm. technologies, new platforms for doing machine learning and AI. Uh, we're seeing, by the way, a lot of growth in the cloud as a yes, platform course, for doing yeah. it because of the inherent um, um, agility and elasticity that uh, at least exists there. And I think one of the things that is indicating the, the growth in, in AI is also the introduction of tools in the markets that help uh, people with, which are less skilled yeah. to be able to produce. So not having to be a data scientist. Exactly, because creating, yeah. creating, machi creating machines, uh, machine learning and artificial mm. intelligence is, is hard. It's not yeah. trivial which means that you have three um, data scientists or rocket scientists yes. who can actually do it. And while it's great, it's not scalable no. and if you want to apply it. So that's where you see other companies that provide software. So the software democratization of it, giving it a, exactly. available to, to lots exactly of It's exactly that. But the other point about it, this is where Tunity is at the benefit of uh, working with customers, is that there's a fundamental difference with AI and machine learning compared to more traditional, say, data warehousing, which is the whole idea of machine learning is that the more data you feed it, the smarter it Smart may become, it right? Because when you're doing machine learning, you want to have the machine try mm -hmm. to figure out correlations in the data that, that you, didn't, you couldn't figure out. That's the whole point of doing machine learning or, or intelligence. You want it to yeah. learn. Yeah. Now, the more data we give it, the more it will learn. And that comes back to a data integration challenge because now the point is you need to scale. Yeah. And actually, one of the things that one of the biggest barriers to implementing machine learning AI, besides the skill that we talked about before, is having the data. Because if I want to do machine learning in the cloud, that's great. And you know, some of our customers, for example, an example of our manufacturing customers that make medical devices, and they bring they they, they wanted to use machine learning to identify and optimize patterns in their production lines. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's all very nice. They wanted to use Azure in their case and Azure ML Studio and those environments. But the data is coming from the shop floors. It's coming from the production facilities. And until the data is available, and if you can correlate, then they can't do any machine learning. So again, that's where we come in, helping them to scale and accelerate the, that process. So part of the vision, the, the mission that we see for uh, what Attunity product did, now becoming Click Data Integration Platform, is to enable and accelerate the availability of data in the cloud and for analytics. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And if today you see a lot of customers that spend 80% of the time just getting the data, and then maybe they have 20% of the time to actually do something mm. with it, we want to try and help customers actually make, flip make that it around, better, yeah. right? So that's that's the whole idea. Uh, so would you say that was Attunity's secret sauce then? Is that is, is that it, or is there much more behind that? So, so and, and also value prop as well, obviously yeah. very important. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the reason Attunity was very successful in the market, uh, recognizes a leader growing very quickly in the last uh, couple of years, it's because we're doing something right. Yeah, of and course. part of it is, an is a really critical market need, uh, combined basically with a very unique value proposition mm -hmm. that we delivered, and then very strong partnerships that we have created, strategic partnerships with the data platforms, the new data platforms, the uh, Amazon Web yeah. Services, Microsoft, Google, uh, new new companies like Snowflake, Databricks, Cloudera. Of yeah, course, more and more. And more. I must admit, I've, uh, yeah, I don't think I'd ever heard of it about a month ago, but now it's starting. It's to everywhere. Really yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. So the point is, everybody wants to use these new data platforms. But you got to get the data there, mm -hmm. and each one and each one of them, the data needs to look maybe a little differently, and that's part of what Attunity uh, enables. So going back to what's kind of our secret sauce, and you'll hear hear us talk about modern data integration. Mm. And it may beg the question: So what's modern about it, right? And what we try to explain is that when data integration has been around for a very long time, yeah. but there are two fundamental uh, capabilities that we believe are at the heart of uh, modernization. And very much like you're modernizing your analytics with advanced analytics, you're modernizing your data platforms with cloud, a new type of data warehousing, a new type of uh, uh, platforms to analyze the data, you also more need to modernize data integration. Mm -hmm. And the two fundamental differences uh, were traditional tools really fail in a couple of areas. Uh, they fail in scale, they fail in latency, and delivering real-time yeah, data, yeah. right? It's a big one. Uh, they fail with efficiency of moving data, and that's predominantly because they move data in batch all the time, and it's highly inefficient, and agility, yeah. okay? Because they're, they're not agile, they're very development-centric. And what we've done 
we've, we've recognized this a few years ago, and we spent a lot of time and effort uh, to create innovation that today became that secret sauce yes. we're talking about. And there's really the two things. One is around is moving from batch to real time. So one part of the secret sauce is batch to real time. And what's behind it is a very unique technology called change data capture, or okay. CDC. Yes. And what CDC is all about, it's about instead of doing a batch, instead of reloading data all the time, it allows you to identify only the delta. Yeah. So it's yeah. all about the delta. And if you have a way to capture only the delta, right, then you can be personally real time. Yeah. Because as it changes, you can do something with it. Uh, you can be very efficient because you're moving a fraction of the data, mm. right? So there's a lot of uh, value, and you can scale, right? If some of our customers move continuously, for example, some of them move over 200 billion changes on a continuous basis. If, if, they, if they weren't moving only the changes, they wouldn't be doing no. it. Economically, they just wouldn't be doing this, right? So the ability to work on a delta is a fundamentally different approach to data integration, and Attunity has been a pioneer in, the, in CDC technology, we provide the, we're, we believe we're the number one provider of change data capture technology. Uh, enterprise grade, high performance, supported in a lot of different platforms, and that's, that's part of the secret sauce. Yeah. And as part of it, by the way, not only does it capture and move the data, it also knows how to capture and move and, and, and process changes to the metadata or to oh, the I schema. See, yeah, that's, and that's a huge issue yeah, for customers, yeah. especially mm -hmm. as they scale, because the structure of your data source changes. Mm. And as it changes, traditional data integration processes break. Because, oh, there's a new table, oh, there's a new column, yeah. they break. Attunity, because uh, the technology, because we can identify the changes in the, the schema, we can also process them auto auto automatically. So we have a way to autonomously adapt to, the, uh, to those changes. And that's, that's, that's yeah, a huge yeah, differentiation. Yeah. I, can see that. I can see that. The second part is around automation. So the other part of the secret sauce is taking uh, patterns of uh, workloads in data integration that have traditionally been in the realm of the developer. Mm. It required somebody to develop software, takes a you know, traditional um, waterfall kind of yeah, process, yeah. takes a long time, and in basically automating it. So basically you can have a user with a significantly reduced skill set be able to take a piece of software, you know, mm. touch a few knobs, uh, you know, to configure a few things, and then the system will generate the data integration application or process for them. And that really dramatically changes the economics of doing data integration and the combination of how you move the data and how you actually implement you it, implement it yes. okay, uh, makes a huge difference. That's where the modernization is coming from. And that address, the addresses the need for real-time data, for efficiency, yeah. for scale, and for agility. Excellent. So that's the secret sauce. So I'm convinced. <laughs> but why are Click and Attunity a good fit then? What, what makes that? As, you know, well, first special? of all, clearly Click thought it was a very well, good yes, idea. Yeah, and, cool. so did, and, so, and so did we. Mm. And the reason is that it's uh, there for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm excited that you can hear how serious Click is about data integration. Yeah. So first of all, it's already uh, shows why there's value because first Click is serious about it. And uh, data integration and data analytics uh, go hand in hand, they're very complementary. So first of all, we think it makes a lot of sense because even the integration between uh, the Attunity product line and the Click Data Catalyst that uh, Click acquired a few months ago, yeah. they make a really strong mm -hmm. uh, connection together. They provide one of the broadest and most innovative uh, data integration platforms in the market that, they help, that enable customers to capture data, deliver data to wherever they want, refine the data, then prepare the data, and finally put it in a catalog so people can easily find it. And in each one of these, uh, of these capabilities, a lot of innovation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So like we talked about, if you capture it, it's how you capture it, right? Yeah. We change the capture. If you're delivering it, it's a lot of automation. And refining it with all the automation I talked about, and then everything that QDC brings to the table with its very unique offering. So it's exciting because a lot of that value. But beyond that, uh, and it's important to know that again, the data integration is independent, which is re also well, really, 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 yes. really important. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and again, Click is serious about it and is serious about keeping it independent, which is, I think, very important. That's why I thought Click was also a good, yeah. good match because to continue the success and bring all this value to a lot of customers, I think it's important to keep it independent. However, beyond that, I think Click, together now with all the data integration capabilities, have uh, a lot of synergy to really answer the complete supply chain of mm. data from raw, as we kind of think about it, all the way to the analytic application yeah. and the user. And I think that's going to make a huge difference for uh, driving literacy, 
because we're going to create agility and uh, really accelerate the time. We sort of call it data ops for analytics of how quickly you can get data to analytics and how quickly you can iterate mm. because business requirements change all the time, the data changes all the time. So really help companies iterate. And if you have better access to the data, better applications, course, you'll yeah. become more literate. Yeah. So I think it's a great right. match. Right. Excellent. So I, lo I love the, your passion. I love the, the knowledge you have about what you're talking about. I think it's fantastic. And that, that's you as an opportunity person. So what I'd like to do now is just learn more about you as a person. Okay. Okay. So how do you wind down? I mean, what, what, because there needs to, you can't be constantly like this, can you? There needs to be a break at some point where you kind of go, ah, so how, what does that for you tomorrow? How, how do, do you I do wind that? down? Do I? Do uh, do yeah, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm not don't. sure. I need to ask my wife. I'm not sure she'd, she'd agree, <laughs> but, uh, um, well, I love spending time uh, with the family. Mm. Uh, you know, I got um, two kids, I have, uh, yeah. my wife got a great cute dog. Yeah. And we love, uh, love spending time together. So I, I really enjoy it. It's mostly on the weekends, but I enjoy uh, mm. spending time with the family. Uh, try to find shows that uh, I can watch with my, with my son. Uh, what kind of shows daughter. would you go and see? Uh, I'm, I'm a sci-fi sci buff, oh, so I, I enjoy it. So uh, I love comedies. Yeah. I love sci-fi. So we, we find things we can watch. And then it's fun to just watch together. So if I can do it on weekdays, it's great. And it's a way to do a little bit yeah. wind down, watch together, talk about it over the weekend. Mm. Um, you know, I've been trying to bring uh, sports back into my life ah. as, as another way. <laughs> Did uh, you have sports before then? Is there any particular uh, sport? A you few still like? years ago, yeah. and I mean, the last few years have been harder to find uh, find the time. Uh, also by traveling, but it's mostly a good excuse. Mm. Yes. And, uh, and, and I find <laughs> it when good. I when I find the time and and I you know to go for a run or. And okay. do other type of sports. It's a great way to wind down and uh, yeah, the time. Yeah, and and it, and it is good for you to do that, isn't it? To get those endorphins going and get the heart yeah, going. Absolutely. It's uh, it's got to be good for you. So, what's on your iPod then? What do you um, or or any other music player that you have? iPhone, I guess iPhone actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah interesting, interesting question. Um, <laughs> I mean, I love listening to music, but uh, funny you should ask. So it's uh, so recently, mm. um, I actually downloaded downloaded this uh, playlist. Uh, it may sound a little funny, but again, I mentioned I like sci-fi, <laughs> and it's a uh, it's a playlist from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, really? It's, uh, you know, it's a uh, good funny, music funny movie. That, exactly. Yeah. So again, I, I grew up in the '80s, mm. and in the movie they have uh, like these collections of uh, songs from the '80s. Mm. And uh, what I loved about it, beyond the fact that he, he really has selected, a tape player, he has a cassette exactly, player, doesn't a cassette he? Yes. Player. I had to explain to my son what a yeah, cassette what player a cassette. is. <laughs> they don't don't get it, right? But uh, besides, I think they really selected mm. really a great. Um, list, playlist, uh, but uh, what I loved about it, if, you know, for those who had a chance to see the, the, the movie, I think they, I think they very brilliantly um, put certain songs with certain scenes. Yeah, and, so it um, remind you of that scene. When exactly, you the music, and when you watch yeah. it, yeah, you know, uh, they put, for example, "Come a Little Bit Closer," which is this yeah. really cool, cool song, and they put it in, in, in this incredible fight scene. <laughs> it's like how did they go together? But it's brilliant. So when, when you listen to it and you kind of think about the scene from the movie, mm. it's a lot of fun. I haven't seen the second one yet, so I need to watch the um, the second so one. I'm, I'm going to keep it a secret then. Okay, good, good. So a film that you've watched more. Well, <laughs> we may even answer this one. You've watched more than once, and why? Um, so let's pick number one, the Gardens of Galaxy. Let's yeah, as you, so as I mentioned, I kind of like mm. uh, sci-fi. Uh, I mean, there's quite a few movies I've watched uh, probably more times than I should, but uh, mm. Star Wars, I probably watched oh. a few more times than maybe I should, but I enjoyed every time. Um, Another movie, I think it's just a great movie, is Shawshank Redemption. Oh, yeah, that's been um, mentioned so many times in these, in these interviews. Un unbelievable movie, the, mm. just the, the story. It's one of those movies you see every time, it's like, yeah. wow. So it has a great message, and uh, I love it. And um, maybe the other one that I've, I've, I keep seeing every single time is Monty Python. I mean, I love oh. Monty Python. <laughs> and I must have watched The Holy Grail. It's a, it's I the can't best, even count. It's the best Monty Python It's film, unbelievable. And, and I had a chance to watch it in, uh, in Boston a couple of years yeah. ago. Actually, John Cleese uh, came, and they, 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 oh, uh, really? they, they, had, they showed the movie. And then after and the then movie, they had John Cleese on stage, oh. and they interviewed him for like an hour. And it was, it was brilliant. Fantastic. So I enjoyed it a lot. And yeah. I, again, this movie, it doesn't matter how many times I see it. It's always funny. I laugh every I laugh single time. So I know it by heart, and I laugh every yeah, single time. Yeah. Well, Itmar, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Welcome thank on board you, to Click, and thank uh, you very we'll, much. Do, we'll do more of these because I can see a lot of interesting conversations going on between me and you. Sounds so great. Thank you, thank you very care. much. Goodbye. It's a pleasure.